covered so now we have five of them uh, recovering we have two left to recover per the reporting pattern those cases that were picked up in OT are being managed September North. Three of them were in Anuba South, one in Pandai District. So that's how the spread of numbers have. Health Service Dr. Patrick Kuma Abuachi says Ghana's current COVID 19 case count stands at 2,790. The country has recorded 18 deaths and 294 recoveries. We have recorded 2,019 cases. Uh, across the country. This covers all the cases that was like, since the first case was identified on the 12th of March. Since the last um, update, we've had an increase of about 550 cases, uh, and this has come out of about 18,000 tests conducted uh, in the last few days over the weekend, wiping out the entire clock in Uchi. 480 of these cases has come from 24 districts out of the 26 districts in Greater Accra. And they have come mainly from Tema, which is about 169. Accra Metro 43. The rest of the country. New. The thousands of eighty-five have been identified through the hands contact tracing. That's been done nationwide, especially in Ashanti and Accra. The cases of Valentine, which have been reported earlier, still remains and fifteen. How did they change? About two thousand four hundred and two. That's about representing about ninety-three point two percent of the cases are either asymptomatic or come very mild conditions. Seven are the ones that come with moderate severe conditions. Currently, five have moderate conditions. Nobody is critical, and nobody is on intensive care units as we speak today. Unfortunately, about 18 persons who, in addition for being having always work. So you can get something to watch. You can get radio to listen to at home. So why do you want to come out? I'll talk about social distancing. Very critical. The Minister for Local Government, went together with us, has managed to even designate new markets, temporary. So that we can have space to do social distancing while we our food items. So when you go to some places, they are using those places like football pitches as parks, sorry, as kids now, because they want the market to be to find away from each other. So those of us who are even going to buy that food, why can't you also queue or go when there is somebody in front of a woman selling tomatoes and we want to go and cramp cells around just one market person? That will help us at all. So let us begin having started to do and observe social distancing protocols. Wearing of masks. Like Initially, when we started, it was like we have to import masks in very large quantities through ingenuity and innovation. Then, yes, and also our own mask. mask. So, wherever you pass around the middle of the street, not selling. But let us be cautious. Food and Drugs Authority is registering companies that have been the mass. All material can be used. They have a way of sewing it. They line it like that. And that is what proving. Said that we can have some standards in the mass production. Now it is all over the place. So why don't we all wear masks? Over the weekend, around town, some places, people are wearing the masks. Well, some of us are selling the masks by the roadside. And it's 
very, very, very expensive. But I know even if it's one CD, some of us will not have money to buy. So those of us who have a little extra, one CD, when you buy one, you two CD, buy one for your next neighbor. That has been the Ghanaian way of life. We support each other. And I'm pleading with companies, organizations, churches, those who have, there are those of us who don't have, we need some to wear, so that the president will know we're listening to his advice. So the idea of I don't have money to buy should not be an excuse to end up from anybody. And the Ablekuma West Municipal Assembly has threatened to close down the Dansomang markets due to the refusal of traders to adhere to social distancing directives. The traders, even though have no masks, refuse to wear them, arguing that it makes them uncomfortable. Officials from Ablekuma West Municipal Assembly and some security personnel stormed the markets to enforce the wearing of no masks by traders and customers. It was revealed many of the traders were not wearing them. Some of your women will be stopped from selling because simple protocol of wearing those masks. They just have it around their necks and when they see us coming, they put it on. Please, my next check, if anybody who has it around their neck and is wearing it, would have to close his eyes Some drivers who plied the Donsoma Road were not adhering to the no masks wearing and physical distancing directive. The Ablekuma West Municipal Chief Executive, George Blay, urged traders and drivers adhere to social distancing protocols. Funny enough, some are like, uh, we can't breathe and all that. And my question to them is, would you want to breathe freely? and contract the virus, or you would want to protect yourself. What we are doing this morning is, if you're not wearing it, we force you to wear it. He further threatened the closure of the market. If it so happens that we get in there and we realize they are not observing the protocols, we wouldn't have an option but to close the place down. The Dansoman Divisional Police Commander, Chief Superintendent Isaac Koju Asante, also entreated the traders to be cautious. Their problem was people who are rather coming to buy who are not using it. So uh, we will be speaking to management of the market. So that from Monday, uh, I think other will assist them to be at the gate so that anybody who is not having the marks will be uh, turned away. Black Man West has so far recorded some 37 COVID 19 cases. Joseph I'm Strong TV3 Accra. I'm here in the studio. I'm Stephen Enti. Traders at the new Ashamang Mandela Market have accused their leaders and the municipal assembly of extorting monies from them on a daily basis. They allege paying 10 cities daily to enable them sell at special locations. But the assembly has denied these allegations. Here's a report by Sarah Paco. Over 400 traders who sell at the new Mandela market have been relocated as authorities take measures to curb spread of the coronavirus. The market was closed over a month ago due to the traders' disregard for the social distancing protocol. Some have been asked to sell at the Rome Down School Park, while others are to sell at these new sheds put up by the assembly. But a visit to the market revealed some of the traders had returned, while others were selling at unapproved locations. According to them, the new allocation was conducted based on favoritism. Others also complained about the high cost of transportation in cutting their goods to and from the new locations, which are not accessible by customers. <laughs> Tina Hato is queen mother of the market. We want to uplift the assembly, the authority, that they should have mercy upon us, so that they should release us, so that we will also run shift in our market, so that we can also feed our children. Another concern expressed by most of the traders who spoke off camera for fear of being victimized was the collection of 10 cities daily from each of them by their leaders to the assembly to enable them to sell at the market. In his reaction, the minister 
Principal Chief Executive Albert Wachiochri denied any knowledge of the collection of money but admitted the issue has been reported to him. We have our own outlet of doing revenue mobilization and uh, they are properly accredited uh, in our uniform with our official tickets and people who pay, I don't think anybody has shown you any ticket coming even from the assembly and uh, that makes it dicey. It's a very serious issue. He assured that traders' processes are far advanced to ensure they have the cards which will enable them to work on a shift at the market. We are putting up these cards, but I think the uh, printer come out of it with their but it has specific uh, security features to prevent people from cutting a lot into the whole system just uh, to uh, make it already. The new Shaiman Mandela market was established years back to decongest the Kaketo market. Uh, let's go to the western region now where the region confirmed covered uh, 19 cases increasing from 9 to 23 in the past three days. TV3, TV3 TV3 News has uh, learned that all cases are asymptomatic. The bio safety level 3 laboratory are the regional veterinary services department has begun testing for COVID-19. Let's go live to the Western Regional. According to Council, where my colleague Eric Awaj is standing by with the Regional Minister of Kwabina, Ochirida Mensa, for more insight into the new cases. Thank you very much, Steve Nancy. As you may have heard, read, or perhaps watched, um, the case count here in the Western region with regards to confirmed COVID-19 cases has moved from 9 to 23. Now, we are learning that all cases are asymptomatic. It means that none of the cases show any sign of the COVID-19 virus. We have been joined by the Western Regional Minister Kabina Otre that comments and we want him to give us an insight with regards to the nature of the cases that we've recorded and where these cases are coming from in the region. Honorable, good afternoon. Welcome to Media Live. Yeah, good afternoon. Um, so, um, we know that the cases have moved from nine to twenty-three. Twenty-five, 25 actually. Okay, so where are these cases coming from? Um, these days, we are trying as much as possible not to get people panicking. So, uh, I'll say that they are in various parts of the region. And that the message I want to send this afternoon is that there's no cure for the illness. Prevention is the only cure. And people should just follow the protocols that have been established to help people prevent the disease, catching the disease um, religiously. So I think that's where I want us to, of course, our discussion on this matter. But at least you can tell us about districts. Yes. So, for instance, LMBLA, Shama, if, if you can run by us some of the figures. Yes. Um, basically, all the, basically, we have some cases in some of, some of the districts. I know the STA, Ekma, Shama, Kwa, LMBLA, uh, in my East. Uh, the cases are showing up there. But you realize that a lot of the cases are important cases. Uh, we've seen a few communities spread, especially in those houses that these people are. And that's why we are saying, like you said, a lot of the cases are also asymptomatic. There are no symptoms. So people might have it, and they might not know. And therefore, people might even have it. They've been asked to do self-isolation, but they might not listen. That's why we are saying that. Protect yourself from other people. They don't. It's like being to that um, drive defensively people should defend themselves they shouldn't wait for them to catch the, the disease before the, their crisis for themselves as an individual stigmatization i'm told that secondly is leading with the uh, cases yeah, that's regional capital everybody comes here it's like accra <laughs> everybody comes to come it's like regional capital. That's a regional capital and some of the cases were referred to them because when we took their samples we tested we took them if you can as the center for counting it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are executing it. 
Yes. Um, um, these results that we received yesterday, uh, how old are they? Oh, I think that they, they've been to a craft by week. Yes. And uh, that's one of the difficulties we also tend to have with the testing period. But now that we have gotten our own uh, test center at the veterinary, you know, it's a collaboration between the public lab at uh, if you can tell. I want to do the veterinary issue separately. So these new cases, it means that we have more than um, 30 new cases. How are they being treated? Uh, we just got the results. We've asked them that immediately to self-isolate. And we have some isolation centers that uh, we are going to put them in because of them are in compound houses. And sometimes it's just difficult to isolate. So um, we've zoned the western region to four. We have the Enzima zone. We have the secondary tacrocardi zone. We have the mining zone. And then we have the Wasa, uh, I mean, fish zone. So we are doing both a quarantine center and isolation center. So those who test positive move them to that system. What we realize is that even though we have isolation rooms in all the hospitals across the length and breadth of the region, I mean, if we take the numbers, currently 25, it means that we are actually being asked to put like two people in one room, which is, we believe that is not the best way. So we have identified some hotels and public spaces already that we are going to put people in. And Then, but then, let, 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 let's do some analysis. We send a sample to uh, Accra and it takes seven days. And the person is positive. It's going for seven days. <laughs> and naturally, we spread the disease among a few of them. Um, if somebody is a worker and he works with 200 people, just imagine what will happen. Or somebody is in a shop, he's gotten it and it's in a shop. What will happen? All the people that come there to buy will, will naturally be suspect. So I believe that testing and quickly isolating is very key because we don't have. A drug for 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 cure, and therefore isolating people for their natural body immune system to kill off virus is key, and therefore ability to isolate as quickly as possible, and then give them some treatment so that they can cure themselves uh, is very important. So I believe that the lab coming on stream and working uh, put us in a very key position to resolve our matters in the Western region as quickly as possible. Once we started testing internally, the knock-off effect will be that we are going to get a number of results at hand. That means that we need to prepare the isolation centers. We know that we have 13 treatment centers. What is the state of our treatment centers and i.e. the isolation centers as well? Yes. Um, the, like I said, the isolation centers, we've divided this western region into four zones. And everywhere we have some centers that can um, uh, uh, accommodate uh, some of those who have tested positive or those waiting in quarantine to know their results. Yes, that's why I say that for every area we have to, we have the isolation and then we have the quarantine uh, places. Now that we are, we are testing, it means that um, maybe by the end of this week our, inc our cases could increase. Um, are, there, are there any special measures or campaign put in place to make the people be rest assured that we are not in uh, that this is not going to grow so that they will be so scared anybody who is panicking is because the person doesn't have enough information or the person is not following or adhering to the protocols because doctors go to labs with infectious diseases they work there 20 years 30 years they don't get infected. They don't die. Those are the nurses that go there and take it for granted. They will get infected. So what I want to, the message I want to get across is that there is one person, two persons, or 100. It is your ability to do yourself by following the protocols. It's the most important thing. All other things. Because there's consistently, more than 80 percent Cases that we have in the Western region. I used to make the no sentence. So you can even happen that your best friend that you're sitting with him right now. That's it. You don't know. You have ability to get this. Wear your nose mask. Wash your hands. Give social distances. When you do that, that will save you. And when President told us about these protocols, 
a message that this uh, disease which the enemy we can see with your naked eye. They choose but the fight that you are fighting. Nobody has been given his gun. Which is the protocols to fight it. So don't wait for the cutting before you complain. And don't panic. So we cause you think that in your community there's a, a positive case. It's your ability to protect yourself that will matter. It's not the Thank you very much. So that has been the West Virginia Minister of Comments are giving us an insight into the nature of our cases in the Western region. My name is KWJTV News, second day. Thank you very much. Let's move to other stories. On May 5, every year, Ghana joins the rest of the world to appreciate the work of midwives who are women with practical knowledge of helping pregnant women give birth. Uh, in the early times when there were no highly trained professionals and equipped hospitals for pregnant women. Wives usually delivered. Uh, of their babies at home. It was straight, most entire our times now. So uh, the coronavirus pandemic, and we want to find out how it's affaffecting or impacting on midwifery care across the country. Let's quickly get to the telephone lines and speak with David Tian Chung, who is a general secretary of the Ghana Registered Nurses and Midwives Association. Uh, joining us on the lines now. Right, uh, we're still trying to raise uh, Mr. Tinkra on the line uh, so we can continue that conversation. This is still midday live from the news hub at Adesawe Kanda in Accra. Frequent hand washing with soap and the running water is one of the preventable ways from contracting COVID-19. Public health advocates want the practice to be part of a Ghanaian way of life to to reduce other kinds of diseases here's a report by beatrice spielgabra washing is essential in the prevention of several viral and bacterial infections such as cholera typhoid polio and meningitis although public health advocates and the practice it was not strictly adhered to until the outbreak of covid19 the constant practice of washing hands with soap and running water has caught on well with both the young and old as a measure to break the chain of contracting the virus. Today, it is the norm to see Veronica Bakker with soap placed in front of shops, offices, beauty saloons, markets and lorry terminals to allow people to wash their hands. <laughs> a section of the public believe the practices should not stop. As we've started, after the COVID, we can continue washing hands and it will help us in preventing many diseases apart from the COVID. Coronavirus has enlightened us to the extent that we realize washing our hands is going to be a very important factor of dealing with these germs that probably might you know, come to our hands, you know, these particles. So I think we should keep on washing. Public health advocates went to local assemblies to ensure the practice is continued after the COVID-19 is contained. This will help reduce the burden of viral and bacterial infections on the public and health institutions. All along public education, we normally talk about it, but only as you are saying, we have not enforced it. Our challenge here is that most people do not understand what you are trying to educate them about, and that is why we find it difficult. So, uh, indirectly, this season is going to be a big lesson and it is going to help us. The MMTs and TCs and all the local governments have really been doing their best to buy Veronica Bakers and all those things for institutions and groups of people in their facilities and businesses. Uh, I think we should continue to ensure that these are approved all over the places. COVID-19 remains a major global public health concern, but there are some positive outcomes that should be maintained. These include the frequent hand washing with soap and running water. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic has brought to the fore the need to utilize educational technologies of all sorts to provide remote learning opportunities for uh, students while schools are closed. The development has ignited the debate of 
whether or not to allow students, particularly those in senior high schools, to use mobile phones, which otherwise are being banned in schools. In 2016, the Ghana Education Service banned the use of mobile phones in basic and senior high schools to allow students concentrate on their studies. According to the service, uncontrolled use of mobile phones by students had a negative impact on their education since they wasted valuable time on social media platforms. There are now calls for the ban to be lifted to enhance e-learning following the COVID-19 pandemic and its social distancing protocols. Up next is MTN Video Report. This is the office of the person's research. And you can also send your video reports via WhatsApp line 055143. This is still midday live from the news hub at Teddy Sawi. And in a crowd, we'll be back with more news. Please stay. And the beats are too loud. Who is scared of the voices of tomorrow's superstars? You especially more. Instant noodles tastes great. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. So what do you care? Are you on the job? Never have one. No, go something. So science started to be more. Are you on the man? The woman is on a co engine. Not quite in your name. So, a big yam in bear said, You know, as an oil let me a year, you must say, Yes, I say. Sabrina oil let me a pen a whole day. Sabrina engine a pabibri, I said. Sabri and an engine be brah whole day. Buff Castro magnetic. Our molecules more than a day in a more oil only be eka engine and nadia. And he abbreviated a bow engine and home back. Now, more than soon to them. And penning four and them sequence four. So, I have been saying, what you have to say, Castro Magnetic, a bow engine, who by am pa. Castro Magnetic, a bow engine, so I never get a juma. I am what you are, or be me, and I am a mushy show. Who's the sufita be free ma? Who goes on and I am a good so I name watch. What you are, what said you are, say, as I say, Bob brings it be an old prostit and a more about how. I announce an answer when I ate it. Wapos wapos to two. One answer, my do do. I ask a be been in a medium. A be a nasro, we are dear neighbor will carry. End point when you have a clinic. A woman in the other boy war. End point. A work class in test road. Shell sign board. Tema County 22. Koana so hotel. Masa Konoma Boya Angel School Complex. Sakra de End point. A woman Naji Queen of Peace inside. Anaji police station nechi pe. Touch your mind. And point your homeopathic and it. Ewo hensa. And it just profiling. Welcome back. Let's go to uh, a story where I told you on uh, of the use of students and mobile phone in 
part of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has brought to the fore the need to utilize education technologies of all sorts sports uh, to provide remote learning opportunities for students while schools are closed. This development has ignited a debate of whether or not uh, to allow the students to particularly uh, those in senior high schools to use mobile phones. In 2016, the Ghana Education Service uh, banned the use of mobile phones in basic and senior high schools to allow students to concentrate more on their studies. So is this something that uh, we should be thinking about reviewing? Let's uh, quickly get on to Skype and uh, speak with uh, cyber analyst, cyber security analyst of the E-Crime Bureau, Philemon Hene, who is joining us on Skype. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much for your time. So tell me, I want to understand if under the circumstances of COVID-19 and the measures that have been put in place for learning to continue in in light of schools closures whether you get a sense that there are certain controls that can be put in place to still make the mobile phone usable while the students are back to school yes yes um thank you very much um there are quite um, a number of controls that you can put in place to manage um, devices um one of them which is popularly used even within the enterprise is the mobile device management is quite an administrative control and a technical control that are usually on these devices to um, monitor the activities. But one thing is that uh, in monitoring the mobile devices and to see what the student is using it for, it's a whole ball game to that because mm. you are going to look at issues about privacy here. You're also going to look at issues whether uh, um, the, school, the students are going to be given um, the mobile devices or they are going to use their personal devices. If they are going to use smart devices, I can manage the privacy of the of students. So, um, and also, it has to be strictly backed by um, policy. And currently, you realize that in most of the tools that we are using for online online learning, there is no standard. People are using Zoom, people are using WhatsApp, people are using some of the solutions, which make it difficult to be able to um, regulate um, this device. And if you are not able to create some kind of standard for these devices of for this um, solution are being used for online education, then it becomes a problem. Right. So, so Mr. Hine, I need us to I need us to take it uh, one by one. You, you, you are mentioning that there are uh, controls that can be uh, used yeah. in order to make this possible. But you're saying that it's not that straightforward or easy because there's a whole lot of them, and even currently the students are using uh, open standards, open sourced uh, uh, software, Zoom, Skype, here and there, without particular standard so how can any government in for that matter ours in ghana go around this to still make sure that mobile phones can be used in schools i i i i think um the first thing that has to be do there should be a policy that will um, back this um, and the policy will indicate um how um or what kind of um, solution can be used because if you also look at um the security aspect of it and also in in terms of uh, functionality, some of the software are better than this. So um, there should be a policy that will be able to back this whole um, online um, platforms so that we have a standard. So there should be a policy that should be the thing that we also have to we have to think about before rolling up any um, security. Right, but um, but, but but let me find out from you your professional viewpoint on whether or not mobile phones should be allowed in schools and the ban existing ban should be struck off okay so from my professional point of view i think by putting the necessary controls in place mobile phone can be allowed in school because um there are a whole lot of information out there that are not necessarily taught in the classroom mm. so when there are some guidelines in the way people should use mobile devices and also if for instance all institutions are going to have a network that students are going to connect then that means uh, administrators of the schools can can determine what. But 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 you've already you've already told us that yeah. these controls are a different ball game altogether because some of them might bother on privacy. So how sure. then do we still uh, institute controls while bearing in mind the issues of privacy? Okay, so when it comes to the uh, monitoring, it can be done at the on on strictly on the mobile device. For instance, if you deploy a solution like the mobile device management, you can restrict apps, which should be um, the installation of apps or the usage of apps. You can even measure screen usage. You can even encrypt 
collect data. These are solutions that are deployed directly on the mobile device. So that is where the privacy issues are, especially. Mm -hmm. and, and again, you can also look at it from the network perspective. So it's like if you are going to connect a mobile device to um, the institution's network, okay, because the institution owns the network, okay, they are able to implement some form of restriction. For instance, you are not able to visit Facebook within um, this hour when class is ongoing, you are not able to visit, let's say, um, YouTube between this period. So that can be done at the network. And even currently, as I, I speak with you now, most institutions, when you go to campus, they have this campus network, and it's being managed. Okay, so if you connect to the Wi-Fi network, there is a um, acceptable use policy that has been developed as to what you should do once you're on the, um, the school's network, the campus network, and what you shouldn't do. And once you have done something which is against um, let's say the policy that has been set then administrators are to identify it and because these devices have been registered they're able to register on network be able to determine who has violated um, this policy and the necessary action is going to be taken and this also serves as a deterrent for people to um, not continue doing or violating this policy so um, basically if um, these controls are put in place first then that can be done but if the mobile devices are allowed without these controls in place, then you are going to have people accessing all sorts of content and on, on, the, on the mobile devices, which might not be healthy for uh, the, the, the students. Right. Um, as a, uh, he before time. Thank you very much. Uh, Philip Momohe is a cyber analyst with the E-Crime uh, Bureau. Let's now do Up Next is Business. Welcome to the business segment of Midday Live. Management of the Kumasi Abattoir fears imminent meat shortage. If Ghana's borders remain closed in the wake of the COVID-19, the only losing now, according to the managers, is to boost local production. Here's a report by William Evans Incom. Ideally, the production capacity of flayed cattle at the Kumasi Abattoir is 400 with 50 cent. But now, flayed cattle production has dropped to 110 with a seed production falling to 28. The drop in animal supply from some neighboring countries threatening future meat processing in the country. Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger have currently closed their borders curtailing animal supply to the Ghanaian market. Animals are not coming the way we are expecting them. So now at the moment you see when you look around there is no transport. At that you will see a lot of long long cars parked here. But we have brought in more animals, but now we don't see them. The only solution now is to boost the local production. Uh, if, uh, the time you can get Ghanaians will find God to get meat to eat. The current situation has affected the price of meat. This is uh, our wrap-up with the business segment. Up next is sports. Please stay. <laughs> Sports here on Middle Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofosulabi. Let's I start off with our very first story from uh, the Olympic Games where it has been cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic now. And uh, I spoke to team captain of Ghana's uh, Olympic team, the 2016 Olympics, John Poma, on what he's doing now uh, that there's a huge, uh, there's a very long break and about the cancellation of the Olympic Games. The uh, virus now has disrupted everybody's activity schedules uh among other things but um right now the most important thing is you know i'm staying safe and you know um all facilities training facilities and gyms and other stuff um has been closed down so i'm doing like you know some free uh body weight exercise like push-ups and sit-ups and you know um any other activity that does not involve the use of weights or being outside of, you know, uh, those are the things that I'm doing right now uh, to make sure that, you know, I, I stay in shape a little bit and also uh, to save uh, from from the virus. Now, not on, I mean, uh, as an athlete, I'm, I'm sure when the, the postponements, the use of the postponements of the Olympics came to, uh, it, it must have hurt you a bit. How did you take it? Well, I think, um, you know, yes, it is it, very unfortunate that, you know, uh, this, this uh, 
Olympics got cancelled. But the good thing is, you know, uh, we have another another um, time to prepare. Uh, the postponement uh, is going to give us, you know, uh, I haven't qualified, so it's going to give me like more time to prepare well. Right. Uh, on the other hand, we have other people that are also, you know, lose their jobs, people are dying and other stuff. So the situation that I'm in right now is, is not, uh, as an athlete, it's not different from what others, uh, other individuals are going through. And I, I, I think, um, you know, Olympics is about friendship and, you know, uh, coming together and, you know, uh, celebrating, you know, each other, culture differences and other stuff. And I think, you know, the virus, you know, was not going to allow us to, to, to have that kind of great time. Right. So Let's move on out to Obwasi, where Ashanti Gold Football Club is one of the best match clubs in the country, backed by rich shareholders who seek glory every season. Now, that's not... That has not exactly been the story though in the last few years. Now, former BA United CEO Roy Arthur is now the sporting director of Ashanti Gold Football Club and is ready to help turn things around at the Boise Base Club. It is a great honor to come close again and to be appointed as a sporting director to also lead the young guys into the game. I can't be working all alone. It's a collective game. We with BA United, their support base is equally big as I could. And you just have to understand them side by side, and you'll be able to have a good job done. Because without them, we can't, I mean, achieve it. And with that, as they can do side by side, I, I, mean, I think we can do a very good job. The new management will not leave Ashango where we met it. We'll do our best, make good signing on bringing quality players and ensure that we're able to hit the European market often. So far, Asgold has a good team. We are going to beef up. But with our new coach, the Italian coach, I mean, we can do best this year. Well, the Minister of Youth and Sports, Honorable Isaac Asiyama, disclosed in a media briefing that the renovation of the Esipon Stadium will be carried out in two phases. Now, the initial phase, as which is said uh, to uh, cost 17.9 million Ghana cities will cover uh, all two phases of the project. Now, the facility built ahead of Ghana hosting the 20, uh, 2008 Africa Cup of Nations tournament has been wasting away due to poor maintenance culture. So, we are here at Eastbourne to commence the rotation of this very important national asset. Before we came here, you've seen the contractor side working. That should tell you, they're not here to just say and go. We are here to say and do it. Krita, the work is scheduled in two phases. It's in two phases. So the scope of work for phase one include the existing defective roofing sheets will be removed and replaced. All those ones that you see. The defects, the references that are off will all be removed and of course new ones put in place. And in phase two, we'll look at the spectators' seats. All the broken seats will be repaired and replaced. After Esipon is back to life, the ministry will ensure religious maintenance culture. We are going to provide maintenance manuals for all the stadiums that we are renovating. So here we have its own maintenance manual. So that it goes strictly according to the maintenance manual. That's what sports is happening here on Midday Live on TV3. My name is Yao Ofusulab. That's it for the news. I'm Stephen Nenti. Thank you very much for staying with us. So we have the crew here. Good afternoon. There's more news at 3news.com.